Hello everyone and welcome back to Age of Mythology Divine Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at the second Lakota Heroic Age God, Tate, who is accessible to both Wii and Haihan Kaga. Tate in Lakota mythology is the embodiment of time and the father of the four winds, and also the fifth wind, kind of, uh, who is Yum, the son of love, which we will get to shortly. His improvements help you do things faster. See, and these villages took a while to get there as per my last video. Anyways, Tate's myth unit is the Kanotila. Kanotilas are very weak. As you can see, they only have 150 HP and only 10% hack armor, meaning they die basically instantly to any sort of melee myth unit or hero attack. However, they have 95% pierce armor. This makes them essentially invulnerable to errors, taking only one damage. And even priests struggle to do decent damage to a Kanotila. Kanotila also fire volleys, some making them a, a shotgun unit similar to the Manticore or to the Pyro Ballista. You can see they fire a massive volley. Uh, Tate also has access to a water version of this, which is essentially the same unit, just aquatic and on a raft, called the Wee Wheeler. And those are very good against arrow ships, as you would imagine. Also, pretty good at taking down docks, given that each arrow will do damage individually and will generally do just one damage to that dock. Uh, but it will die very quickly to things like arrow ships, hammer ships, that sort of thing. Oh, and Wombly has come back to us. Nice. Tate's technologies are the Son of Love, which makes Yakuwa and Medicine Women train in 33% of the time, but cost 10% more food or gold. This is an extremely valuable technology, because you only get one town center, and reducing your training time by 66%, by two-thirds. I mean, you can't really see it because of the cheats, but it makes them train essentially three times faster. So if you can afford it, which suddenly becomes more difficult, you are essentially getting three town center villager production. This, in my opinion, is the reason why you would go Tate. His guy power is decent, his myth units are okay. That technology puts you on three town centers instantaneously. And it's worth noting at this point, after your second migration, your town center is 45 population. So you are getting a three town center setup off of one town center. The only thing I guess to really think about is, of course, if you lose that one town center, you are now on zero town centers. But Tate is a fantastic booming god for this reason, while Anong Ite is more aggressive. Tate's second technology is a little bit less impressive, but is still decent. Uh, A2 allows your packed buildings to move 25% faster and to be unpacked at no cost. So now your thicker sea is moved instead of at 3.3 speed at 4.13 speed, which is honestly decent. Tate's Akasita is the White Marked. White Marked are long range cavalry archers that have a medium to slow firing speed but are very accurate. They are good against infantry. So as we can see, even though they are relatively long-range dodges, they still land their shots very regularly. They also have 23 range because, as mentioned in the last video, they get a plus 2 range. Normally, they will outrange a tower. With we, they will outrange a tower and then some. As I've mentioned before, the Lakota have fantastic cavalry archer units. Vastly superior to things like the Terma, or the Calvary Auxilia, and especially the travesty that is the Mounted Archer from the Chinese. 
Now let's get the Mythic Age and get Omniscience. Ate's God Power is Winds of Time, which advances time on a number of enemy soldiers, turning them into old men. This is similar to Curse in that it works both on human soldiers and villagers, with a maximum number of each. And since the enemy doesn't see fit to train human soldiers yet, we'll just turn a bunch of villagers into old men. Worth noting is old men are not aggressive by default. They will run away if attacked. However, you can make them attack. They are technically a little bit stronger than a villager because of uh, that HP bonus. However, the fact that like a villager, they will run away and they are not affected by any improvements whatsoever make them a terrible military unit. They don't cost populations. So if you're feeling merciful and your opponent turns a bunch of units into old men, you can just run them away and sit them in the back of your base. But overall, this is a devastating blow to a military, especially a well-equipped and upgraded military, with its effectiveness essentially being proportional to the upgrades that the units have received. And because it is, it turns the units into more useful things than Curse does, it also affects more units than Curse. I would strongly recommend using it on both villagers and military so that you get the full use. Again, similar to Curse, but especially because you can kill essentially five villagers for free with this god power. Though it does turn them into okay-ish units to suicide into your enemy if you so desire. And that is Tate. I hope you have a nice day.